Well, it's another day, another video, and another Hawaiian shirt. For those of you who don't know, I spent six months in Lanzhou, China as Lanzhou University of Technology's first ever exchange student. So these people who are just starting to watch me keep wondering, what the heck, where is Lanzhou? So this video is to clear up some of the confusion. I'm gonna talk about Lanzhou and Gansu province in general. Enjoy! Lanzhou is pretty off the beaten track. It's way off there in Western China in Gansu province. Here's a map, take a look at it, enjoy it. Although the official statistic is that Gansu province sees less than 250,000 tourists a year. It's actually way under that. The only reason I know is because I have this. This is the state of China atlas and I have this because I am a nerd. All right, here's some pictures. I'm gonna talk, let's go. Lenzhou itself is a city of about four million people and it's situated along the banks of the Yellow River. The city is built kind of in a bowl of mountains and then also across the two banks of the river. Pretty cool place geographically. It's also been called the gateway to Western China because people like military people and truckers and travelers and anyone else who wants to get into Western China like Xinjiang or Tibet they pretty much have to go through Lanzhou. It's a major transportation hub. Okay now, let's talk about pollution because the pollution was what I was asked about more than just about anything else. In 1999, Lanzhou got a fantastic prize of being the worst polluted city on the planet. Yes, the worst polluted city on the planet was Lanzhou, China. However, things have changed since then. For the record, yes, there is pollution and I saw it every day, but you know, some days are worse than others, and a lot of days it's really clear, just as clear as anywhere in America. Gansu province as a whole, including Lanzhou and all of those other cities that are in the province, emit less than 50,000 tons of sulfur dioxide, soot, and dust, and things like that each year. This may sound like a lot, but when you compare it to all these places, Sichuan, Hunan, Henan, Shanxi, Shandong, Jiangsu, Hebei, Inner Mongolia, Liaoning, all of those places emit more than 200,000 tons a year. Lanzhou is looking pretty good. More more info down below about the pollution thing. All right, I'm gonna show you some more pictures. Lanjo is home to a pretty large amount of agriculture. It accounts for about 15% to 20% of Lanjo's GDP, which is cool. When you get to talking about farmers and large agricultural communities, you inevitably end up talking about lack of education and illiteracy. Yeah, it's true. 10% or more of Gansu's population has had no schooling whatsoever, and about 15% of adults cannot read. And the average person in Gansu province makes five to 9,000 RMB less than the national average per year. All of these statistics produce kind of a bleak picture of Lanzhou and Gansu in general. Life in Lanzhou is, is pretty good. I say good, but good is a really, really flexible and really loaded and relative term. What do you think good means? How do you live a good life? Leave your thoughts down below. I'm interested. When you walk around Lanzhou, you see all the traditional signs of a developing city. There's construction everywhere. There's stuff being built or torn down in some form or fashion. Some areas look like this and some areas are looking like this. So, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. You got new stuff and old stuff and people trying to figure out where to go in, a, in the mix of all this. You'll tend to see some poverty, but that just tends to be more common in Western China. But as sad as it is to say, that's just the way that life is in Western China in the interior of the country. And even life in Lanzhou is quote unquote better than in other parts of the province. A really cool thing about Lanzhou is that there's a large number of minorities, particularly Hui people, which are people in China who have a belief in Islam and there's also a slight race distinction but I'm not exactly sure how that goes and there's also a large segment of Tibetans who live in Gansu province a lot of them in Lanzhou people are buying and selling goods everywhere commerce has made its way from inside the shops to outside in the streets here's a few pictures yeah I've made the comment a lot of different times about how I think that China is just one big shop Lanzhou has a lot of mountains, parks, universities, and has a really vibrant cultural life along the Yellow River. You can go all around the river on either side and you can see older people doing Tai Chi, playing Arhu, or just sitting at one of the you know little bitty tea stalls along the area and just idling the day away. And that was one thing that I really loved about Lanzhou. It was a real community in some respects, although we'd consider it a big city, you know, if you're living in America where the cities are pretty small, it still is a very community-based area and it's pretty relaxed and people are genuinely friendly. But yeah, I had a lot of really great conversations with people along the Yellow River. It's just a great area. Now it's got to be said that since Lenjo sees so few foreigners and tourists that pretty much outside of any university you're not going to find any English speakers. If you don't speak Chinese and you want to go to Lanzhou, it's going to be pretty tough. 
Despite the language gap, people in Lanjo are genuinely friendly and they're quick to help you out and they're just great people. You know, if you just try to make an effort to be nice and be friendly, be open and try to communicate, you're good. That's about all I can think of to talk about here in this video. Lanjo's got a lot of really great food. It's got a lot of really great people. It's got some great parks. It's got some, you know, it's got a lot of really cool stuff to offer you. I will see y'all next time. <laughs>